Hello. When it comes to crimping the pawn connectors, the supply of shaky tutorials can be quite overwhelming, so to further contribute to the overall confusion, let's make another one. Nonetheless, I will actually try to get the items in focus properly and show you how to hold wire, connector and all the tools to achieve a good crimp quickly. The tools you're going to need are a wire stripper, a wire cutter, a pair of pliers, preferably with a precise tip, and a crimping tool. The one I'm going to use is the SN48B. Other people use the SN20-something-B. The only difference is that with the other one you can handle slightly smaller diameters. But for this type of application, both will do the job. As far as compatible wire types are concerned, I recommend 0.25 square millimeter solid or stranded wire. According to this Chinese specification sheet that came with the box, the connectors should accept anything between 0.13 and 1.3, which translates to 26, 216 and AWG. But that didn't work for me at all. I even had trouble forcing a 0.5 wire into the housing. So again, 0.25 is the way to go. Before I get to the actual crimping, let me give you a brief overview on what we're looking at here. The connectors come in two types, male and female. The only difference is the tip. The housings are always the same, but you can get different configurations. Single, double, 2x3, whatever you need. Each connector consists of three parts. The tip, which you should make sure not to damage. The first pair of smaller wings, which will be crimped around the bare wire and the larger pair of wings which bites into and or around the isolation. Now let's take a look at the tool itself, the SN48B. There is a ton of expensive tools out there and in all honesty this one is probably far away from being the best, but it only costs 15 bucks on eBay and crimping isn't exactly a precise science anyway. You can see four teeth or rather three gaps, the smallest one being labeled 0.5. If you look at it from an angle, you will notice that each gap has a wider half and a narrow half. That is because the crimping is done in one step for both of the two pairs of wings. As you press the connector inside the gap with your thumb and then slide it down or left from this perspective, you will feel how the larger wings are hitting the edge between the two sides. That's how you know the connector is in the correct crimping position. Another thing that is very important is this M shape at the top of the gap. As you apply pressure on the tool, it's going to push the connector and its wings into that M shape, one wing on each side. They will be forced to curl inwards and eventually grab the wire tightly. Let's get to it then. You take a wire strip off some of the isolation. Then you get your wire cutter and cut the wire down to a few millimeters, just enough to occupy the small pair of wings. If this is a female connector, be extra careful that no wire is obstructing the tip. Place the wire inside the connector and hold it down with your thumb, then give a firm squeeze so that the wings close around the unisolated part of the wire. This serves two purposes. First, it makes sure that you can't push the isolated part too far in. Secondly, it will stop the wire from falling out too easily. You then turn the connector around, hold it upright, and give the other pair of wings a gentle squeeze. Again, this is for stability. Definitely make sure that you leave some room between the tips of the wings, because that's where the ridge of the M shape will go. Now that the wire is more or less safely attached to the connector, you can flip the whole thing over and hold it by the connector, with the wings facing away from you. Grab your crimping tool, insert the connector, press the wings into the M shape and slide down until the wings hit the edge. Give it a last check and when everything is in position, crimp. And this is more or less what the result should look like. You can see that the tip is undamaged, the small wings are tightly pressed into the naked wire with no plastic hanging into it, and the other pair of wings is keeping the wire from sliding out. Now with this tool that I have here, sometimes the connectors are flattened a little too much so they won't fit into the housing. 
If that happens to you, just grab your pliers and model the rear end here a little into shape. If you do that, it should slide in pretty easily. And if for some reason you need to get the wire back out, just lift this plastic latch a little and pull. Alright, that's it for now. Have a good day and good luck with your crimping adventures.